May we never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of the cross is the power of God to us who have been saved. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Ronald Leggett. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we remember the martyrs of Vietnam, St. Andrew Dung Lac, who is a priest, and many of his companions who were martyred in the 19th century. So more about them after our gospel. And so my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, source and origin of all fatherhood, who kept the martyrs and Andrew Dunlack and his companions faithful to the cross of your son, even to the shedding of their blood, grant through their intercession that spreading your love among our brothers and sisters, we may be your children both in name and in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. In my vision, I, John, saw a white cloud, and sitting on it, one like a son of man, with a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the sanctuary and shouted aloud to the one sitting on the cloud, put your sickle in and reap. Harvest time has come, and the harvest of the earth is ripe. Then the one sitting on the cloud set his sickle to work on the earth, and the earth's harvest was reaped. Another angel, who, who also carried a sharp sickle, came out of the temple in heaven, and the angel in charge of the fire left the altar and shouted aloud to the one with the sharp sickle, put your sickle in and cut all the branches off the vine of the earth. All its grapes are ripe. So the angel set his sickle to work on the earth and harvested the whole vintage of the earth and put it into a huge winepress, the winepress of God's anger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, the Lord comes to rule the earth. Proclaim to the nations God is king, the world he made firm in its place. He would judge the peoples in fairness, let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. The Lord comes to rule the earth. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to rule the earth. With justice he will rule the world. He will judge the peoples with his truth. The Lord comes to rule the earth. The Gospel Acclamation. Hallelujah, ha hallelujah, alleluia. Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Hallelujah, ha hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When some were talking about the temple, remarking how it was adorned with fine stonework and votive offerings, Jesus said, all these things you are staring at now, the time will come when not a single stone will be left on another. Everything will be destroyed. And they put to him this question, Master, they said, when will all, will all this happen? And what sign will there be that this is about to take place? Take care not to be deceived, he said, because many will come using my name and saying, I am he, and the time is near at hand. 
refuse to join them. And when you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened, for there is something that must happen before the end is not so soon. Then he said to them, nation will fight against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and plagues and famines here and there. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So our Lord predicts that uh, near the end of time, uh, extraordinary things will happen. Some will be terrible and some will be great. But sometimes you find those two things are in the same place. Now, our, our feast today, our memorial today of St. Andrew Dunlack and his companions is such a story. There were great things happening in Vietnam, but there were also terrible things happening too. So today we're remembering these Vietnamese martyrs, but we maybe need to understand uh, the, the whole story. Now, Christianity came to Vietnam through the Portuguese who brought Christianity uh, to the Vietnamese. And the Jesuits, uh, they started a mission at Da, at da Nang in 1615. Why? Well, because Japanese Catholics were there because they'd been driven out of Japan, themselves persecuting Christianity there. But in Vietnam, there was a similar story. There was a king in Vietnam who tried to force Christians to deny their faith. And what he would do, he would place a crucifix on the floor. And as a symbol of a Christian's denial of their faith, he would make them stamp on the crucifix, denying Christ. He knew that the, the cross was a a powerful symbol of, of Christianity, of Christ absorbing violence and overcoming it. And that's exactly what the Vietnamese king wanted to stamp out. And so very often Christians would do this, but many, many didn't. And it was they, of course, that were martyred. The king obviously wanted to, to kill the priests, um, and so families harbored priests in their house, and they had little hiding places for them, a little bit like the priest holes uh, post-Reformation in England. Now, there were 60 years of persecution, starting from 1820, and the first wave of persecution saw 100,000 Catholics persecuted and killed, in Vietnam, and then 300,000. And it's in this wave of persecution that Andrew Dung Lac and his companions were martyred. Now, there were other waves of, uh, 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 of martyrdom in 1847 and in 1862, and the French managed to, managed to secure a treaty uh, with Vietnam which meant that the Catholics weren't so heavily persecuted. In 1954, a million and a half Catholics were registered in Vietnam. One can't um, uh, imagine that people were not impressed by St. Andrew Dunlack and his companions about their tenacity, about their bravery. Very often when someone tries to squeeze the church in a country, tries to, to push it out, very often what you find is the, the church grows. It's referred to sometimes as the seed of martyrdom. Now, we know that Christianity is still being persecuted in different parts, in different parts of the world. One can't imagine that they will be able to literally squeeze Christianity out of this world. <clears throat> so let's pray for those persecuted Christians today. Let's pray for Catholicism in, in Vietnam, in that uh, 
country that still refers to itself as communist, that the seed of the martyrs will produce much fruit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hand. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Holy Father, the offerings we bring as we venerate the passion of the holy martyrs, so that amid the trials of this life we may always be found faithful and may offer ourselves to you as an acceptable sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, St. Andrew Dunlack and his companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works by which, in our weakness, you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most the soul of brother, again. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brother Ronald, who has fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment or condemnation but through your loving mercy, be for me protection of mind and body, the healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be safe for eternal life. safe for eternal life. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Renewed by the one bread, as we commemorate the holy martyrs, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that, abiding as one in your love, we may merit by endurance an eternal prize. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, a Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. And may the divine assistance remain always with us. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.